A long-pending hike in real estate guideline values and allocation towards metro rail projects and industrial parks, a renewed emphasis on social spending. Some of the key takeaways from Tamil Nadu's state budget tabled on Monday. In fact, the revenue deficit is down 50% in two years. That's one of the key headlines coming in from the state budget. Joining me now is the man himself, the finance minister of Tamil Nadu, P. Tiagarajan. Mr. Tiagarajan, always a pleasure. Thanks very much for joining us here on CNBC TV 18 on the Newsmaker. Let me start by asking you about that big headline that's come in on the revenue deficit down 50% over the last two years. In your speech, you talk about a decline in total revenue expenditure as well as a projected increase in revenue receipts. Uh, now, this is, a, this is a big one. Explain to us where you've managed to cut expenditure and where you see opportunities for augmentation of revenue. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, I must admit that the 62,000 we inherited was the depth of the COVID crisis. So it was uh, uh, probably an exceptional year. But I must also state that for every year after the first incarceration of the former Chief Minister, Ms. Jailalta, for every year from 2014 till 2020, that is 1920, uh, the government of Tamil Nadu had been having ever increasing revenue deficits. So there was a clear slippage of revenues from what used to be 9 to 10 percent of the GSDP down all the way to about 6 percent before the crisis and then down to 5 percent uh, after the crisis. We have rectified that some part of the way. We have brought it up to about 6.15 percent or so. And we still have a long way to go, as I've said in the, in the budget speech. There's still a lot of revenue improvement that needs to happen. And I don't mean necessarily in any new taxes or new levies or anything. As you know, the states are very constrained. We only have indirect taxes and some fees and charges. But in fact, in the uh, actual prevention of leakages, better implementation of systems, better accountability, and so forth. On the revenue side, uh, we had probably some long pending reforms, in particular on the electricity tariffs, which had not been uh, revised for a long time, and also on property taxes, which had not been revised in some cases for 20, 25 years. So under the leadership of our chief minister, we were able to augment the revenues, not directly to the state, but to the electricity board and to the uh, local bodies, which in turn helped them provide better services to the consumers and effectively reduce some of our make whole, you know, kind of loss provisions uh, by a few thousand crores. But the greatest probably improvement was that we have started to put controls, uh, systemic checks and balances, improved audit, uh, electronic monitoring. For example, many of our public sector enterprises had not been audited or not submitted accounts for, for many years. We have now put in an electronic uh, platform where they have to submit the accounts immediately to the state, and we have strengthened the Bureau of Public Enterprises that looks into that. We have created a new post, Director General of Audit, uh, brought in on deputation an uh, officer from the IAS and greatly improved the audit mechanisms. We have asked a lot of questions, we have put a lot of data systems in place, and we have greatly increased the efficiency of spending, and that would probably be the reason for this great improvement. Uh, over two years. Uh, so you talk about, uh, you know, plugging leakages, uh, enhancing audits, etc., which has been one of the aspects that has helped you narrow that revenue deficit number by 50% over the last two years. But if I were to talk to you about the road ahead and you acknowledged yourself that uh, there is a long distance to cover, what can potentially be the revenue uh, drivers in terms of augmentation. Uh, I also want to understand from you what the contribution has been uh, through TASMAC sales, because uh, that number, I understand, will be uh, put out in the month of April. But what's been the contribution uh, from the TASMAC sales, and what else could you potentially look at? Is monetization of public assets going to be part of the agenda in terms of revenue mobilization? Uh... All good questions. Let me take the, the last one first. So far, we have not felt the need to consider monetization of any assets. What we are very keen on is PPP model for new projects, new investments, as much for the expertise and the discipline and the market accountability that they bring as for the capital that they would bring and help us accelerate growth. Going back to TASMAC itself, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I have been on the record multiple times saying that I still think that the leakages in TASMAC are very high. Now, these are not like, uh, what do you say, um, um, hypotheses, right? We have quantitative data 
what was the excise as a percentage of GSDP every year for the last 15 years? What were commercial taxes pre-GST uh, pre and post-GST? What has been the contribution of the union share of taxes? All these we have quantitatively, and we can show in very, very precise terms what percentage of commercial taxes as a percent of GSDP we are still missing. And we can show that relative to Tamil Nadu two years or three years or five years or ten years ago mostly. Uh, and we can show that relative to, let's say, Maharashtra or Gujarat or Karnataka, which are the other three large rich states of, of India. So we know where the leakages are quantitatively. Now we have to break that down by region, by sector, by collection office, and we have to figure out how to plug those, uh, those gaps. Because let's be very clear, uh, we are short about 3% of GSDP in total revenues compared to, I would say, the fiscal golden period of 2006 to 2011, mm. in the sense that we should have probably 2 to 2.5% two more uh, revenue from the state's own revenue, which in this year's GSDP estimate of roughly 25 lakhs, that's about 50 to 62,000 crores, and then another 1% or so from the union share of taxes plus uh, grants in aid, and so that's another 25,000 crores or so. As has been pointed out in many CAG reports in the past, 18, 19, 19, 20, so forth, that even the 14th uh, Finance Commission's estimates of Tamil Nadu's revenues were uh, underrun by about 75,000 crores in the previous regime. Now, we've improved that quite a bit. We've raised the revenues almost 60, 70,000 crores over two years. We still have a long way to go. You know, let's talk about CapEx because this has been the focus uh, of the union budget. Uh, we've seen a 33% increase as far as uh, uh, CapEx is concerned. And the expectation is that the same will happen at the end of states as well. Uh, in this budget, you've uh, announced higher allocations as far as metro rail projects are concerned, industrial parks are concerned. Uh, can you give me an assessment of where things currently stand in terms of CapEx that has already been utilized for the year, for the financial year that closes on March 31st. And of course, you're assuming a 15% higher CapEx allocation for FI24. Yeah, let's just take the long-term perspective on CapEx also, right? If you take the 2006 to 11 regime, where I will start, uh, the CapEx went up more than 100% in the course of five years. That's what good regimes are supposed to do. They ran a revenue surplus for the five-year total period, three years of surplus, two years of deficit, but the added value was five years of surplus. Therefore, 100% of the borrowings plus a bit of revenue surplus went to CapEx, and CapEx went up like 130% or something in five years. You take the 2011 to 2021, the 10 years of the previous government, and CapEx barely went up you know, about 80% in two, two terms. So in 10 years, it went up maybe 80 to 100%. That was it. So we have come and tried to accelerate the cap, uh, CapEx. And I've got to tell you, we've got two, three problems. The first problem is the sheer capacity to spend, to build, to have those kinds of skilled contractors seems to have declined. I chair a committee for projects worth uh, 100 crores and more that the Honorable Finance, uh, Chief Minister has put in place for us to monitor progress on big ticket projects. And every time I find that we are behind schedule. Now, part of that is our unique uh, weather problem, which is that we lose two, three months a year due to the monsoon between September and December. We also had some massive floods uh, in the 2021-22 year. Of course, we also were locked down like many places in the first uh, you know, uh, year of our period, 21-22, second wave, third wave, etc. But our capacity to spend is not where we would like. Capacity to do real hard capex, which is another reason why I said I'm looking for PPP. But our ability to fund big ticket items is keeping on increasing. So, you know, we've already increased the allocation to CapEx uh, significantly, probably by, as you say, 15% this year, but over two years, probably 30%. And if you look at our medium term fiscal plan, we plan to almost double the CapEx again in the next two years because what is happening is when the revenue deficit goes down, within our borrowing limit, we're able to allocate much more of that borrowing to CapEx. So, when we inherited this government, uh, there was probably 3.5 or so percent of revenue deficit out of 4.61 percent fiscal deficit. So we're bas they were basically putting in a little over 1 percent of GSDP into CapEx. This year we're going to end the year at 3 percent fiscal deficit, of which only 1.23 percent is revenue deficit. That means our CapEx has gone up to 2.77 percent, or more than double as a percentage of GSDP. So that's basically what you're supposed to do. The more you control your revenue deficit, 
you get the room for CapEx investment. We have a lot of projects, but again, I have my own concerns about the ability to scale that rapidly. For example, can we really, as a state, find the partners? And you know, most states have to go through tenders and construction companies and, and partners. It's not like states have their own PWD departments that can do that kind of work because the work is varied and it comes and goes and the technology keeps improving. The question is, can we almost double our CapEx in the next two years? We need to find better execution models and better PPP models with you know, world-class uh, and like national-level good contractors who we need to work with. Well, time for us to head into a break, but when we return, we continue our conversation with the Finance Minister of Tamil Nadu, P. Tiagarajan.